Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to talk here about the TCA cycle, and this is very heavily tested on the USMLE. Uh, fortunately, there are not really a whole lot of disease processes that go on with the TCA cycle. So when you do get a question, it's going to be fairly straightforward. Uh, there's not a whole lot of weird things that they can ask about this. So it's likely if you get a question about this, it's going to be a straight biochemistry question. So let's run through this. First of all, I want you to know this mnemonic. You got to know all of your intermediates in the TCA cycle. Otherwise, you're going to be completely lost. So the mnemonic is think of a prostitute out selling themselves for sex and a cop comes along and the prostitute asks, can I keep selling sex for money officer? Well, here's your, uh, your products. So we have citrate, isocitrate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, and oxaloacetate. All right, so how do we start this? Well, remember that the end product of glycolysis is pyruvate. So we start out with pyruvate, and pyruvate doesn't actually go into the TCA cycle, but it does get converted into acetyl-CoA. And that is done by the first enzyme of uh, prior to the TCA cycle, which is pyruvate dehydrogenase. And that's actually a complex, and it's an important complex for you to know because this is one of the enzymes that is uh, colloquial, colloquially known as the tender loving care for Nancy enzymes. We're going to see one more of those uh, in this talk. And that means that it requires four or five cofactors, and th that those are thiamine or thiamine pyrophosphate, L for lipoic acid, uh, C for CoA, F for FAD, and N for NAD. Okay, so we generate acetyl-CoA, and you may remember that acetyl-CoA has two carbons. Now, um, in order to start the TCA cycle, we have to bring acetyl-CoA in and we have to combine it with something. And that thing that we happen to combine it with is oxaloacetate. And that's the last uh, in our mnemonic, um, but we'll come around back to that as we go through this. Now, oxaloacetate has four carbons. And so when we combine these two things together, we get citrate. And the enzyme that is responsible for this is called citrate synthase. I'm just going to write CS there. Okay, so then we go from citrate to isocitrate. Okay, and this should make sense as you're going through the mnemonic here. The enzyme that does this is called a conotase, not a super important enzyme. All this does is rearranges citrate, so it doesn't really require any energy. It doesn't really give us any products or anything, um, so a fairly unimportant enzyme. Then we go from isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate. And this is an important step. So we go to alpha-ketoglutarate. And the reason that this is an important step is that this is the rate limiting step. So the enzyme here is isocitrate dehydrogenase, or IDH, and this is the rate limiting step in the TCA cycle. Next, we go from alpha-ketoglutarate to succinyl-CoA. Succinyl-CoA. And this requires the enzyme alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase. And this is also a tender loving care for Nancy enzyme, along with pyruvate dehydrogenase. So this uh, process here uh, will give us succinyl-CoA. Now, I do just want to bring up that this here, succinyl-CoA, is four carbons. So in this process of going from isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate to succinyl-CoA, we went from six to five carbons to four carbons. Okay, next, we go from succinyl-CoA to succinate. Not a lot of important stuff happens here other than we lose a CoA, and as we're going to see, when we lose a CoA, oftentimes we generate either ATP or GTP. Next, we go from succinate to fumarate. 
You may recognize fumarate if you watched the uh, lecture that I did on the urea cycle. Um, so the enzymes that catalyze these two steps from succinyl-CoA to succinate is succinate thiokinase. I'm just going to write succTK. And then from succinate to fumarate, we have succinate dehydrogenase. Next, we go from fumarate to malate. Malate. And the enzyme that does this is called fumarase. And then finally, we go from malate to oxaloacetate. And the enzyme that does this is called malate dehydrogenase. Okay, so we know all of our products now, all of our intermediates, and we know the enzymes. And if you know what intermediate you're going to, you should be able to remember the enzyme uh, because the names of the enzymes kind of have something to do with the products uh, that they're involving. Okay, so a lot of times on the USMLE, you're not just asked, okay, what enzyme catalyzes what product? You may be asked, what, what byproducts are you going to get from a certain reaction? Or what, uh, what enzymes are inhibited or, or uh, upregulated uh, by uh, which chemicals like ATP or ADP or NADH? So we're going to go into that, and this can be really uh, grueling to try to remember, but I'm going to give you some hints here that might help you. So anytime you have an enzyme that ends with dehydrogenase, you're going to generate either an FADH2 or an NADH. Okay, so let's run through this. So with pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, we generate an NADH. I'll just write that there. Okay, and then where are other dehydrogenases? Well, isocitrate, oops, isocitrate dehydrogenase, that's going to generate an NADH. Alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is going to generate an NADH. And then malate dehydrogenase is going to generate an NADH. Now, what about this other one here? So fumar or succinate dehydrogenase, where we generate fumarate, that happens to give off an FADH2. Now, essentially, these are going to do the same thing. Um, they both bring electrons to the electron transport chain. Uh, but you do need to know that succinate to fumarate generates an FADH2, not an NADH. So those are our NADHs and FADH2s. Just remember that they're all involved in the de with the dehydrogenase enzymes. So another important product that you will get is CO2. And it makes sense that the CO2 is going to come off where we're losing carbons. So both steps that involve alpha-ketoglutarate will give, you, give off CO2. And so that's what causes us to go from a six carbon product with isocitrate to a four carbon product, which is succinyl-CoA. Uh, and then one more thing uh, is the generation of GTP. So the GTP is generated at the succinyl-CoA to succinate step. So we go from GDP and we generate a GTP. And GTP is an ATP equivalent, so what would happen here is you would go from GTP that you generated back to GDP, and an ADP would then get converted to an ATP. So you generate an ATP. It just so happens that this step directly involves uh, GTP. So what do we end up with, with this whole thing here? Well, we've got four NADHs, or sorry, three NADHs, and one NADH will generate 2.5 ATPs in the electron transport chain. We've got one FADH2, and one FADH2 will generate 1.5 ATPs in the electron transport chain. And then we've got one GTP, which is an ATP equivalent, and two CO2s. Okay, so that is, those are our, our products uh, from, from the TCA cycle. Now, I do want to bring up a couple other things. Succinyl-CoA is the 
end product of the vomit pathway. Remember, that's valine, odd chain fatty acids, methionine, isoleucine, and threonine. So all of that will end up there. Remember that you go through propionyl-CoA, methylmalonyl-CoA, and then you end up in succinyl-CoA. And I uh, have a video that uh, I go over the vomit pathway, so you can go back uh, and, and watch that uh, shortly. Um, another product here, fumarate, remember that this is the end step of phenylalanine and tyrosine metabolism, and it's also a byproduct of the urea cycle. Okay, um, and then another thing that comes up on the test is what citrate does. Citrate is a product of the uh, TCA cycle, uh, but citrate happens to inhibit phosphofructokinase 1, which is, remember, important in glycolysis. So if you have citrate, it's really just a marker that you have a lot of energy, you're generating ATP, so you wanna hit the brakes on glycolysis and preserve some of that glucose. Uh, so that will inhibit PFK1. And then, and that is, uh, by the way, uh, the rate limiting step of glycolysis. And then citrate will also induce an enzyme called acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And remember that that is one of the steps in fatty acid synthesis. And that makes sense. Again, if you're generating a lot of energy, then it makes sense that you wanna store that energy. Now, what things will inhibit these enzymes? So pyruvate dehydrogenase is inhibited by ATP, acetyl-CoA, and NADH. So all of these steps are going to be inhibited by anything that indicates you have a lot of energy. So NADH is generated when you have a lot of energy. ATP is generated when you have a lot of energy. GTP is, is generated when you have a lot of energy. So all of those things are going to inhibit these enzymes. Uh, another thing that inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase is arsenic poisoning. Okay, so what inhibits, um, let's say, uh, isocitrate dehydrogenase, since that's our rate-limiting step? Well, ATP is going, going to inhibit that, and NADH is going to inhibit that. Now, what would induce it? ADP because that says we have low energy. Now, what about alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase? Same thing, ATP and NADH. But there's one more thing that induces, or that inhibits alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, and that's the product, succinyl-CoA. Now, what would um, activate this enzyme? Calcium, okay, and that's there's a complicated reason behind that um, that I'm not going to go into here. Okay, so that is the TCA cycle in a nutshell. I just do want to bring up one more fact though, and that is if you have a blockage of any of these steps, and primarily the place you are going to have a blockage would be pyruvate dehydrogenase if you have arsenic poisoning or an inborn defect, then you're going to have a buildup of pyruvate. And what's one place pyruvate can go to? It can become lactic acid. So if you have a disorder of the TCA cycle and you can't undergo uh, aerobic metabolism, because this really is our way of generating those NADHs to engage in aerobic metabolism, then you'll have a buildup of pyruvate, and the consequence of that is that you'll have lactic acidosis.